Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today we're going to talk about one of those problems. It, it comes up once in a while. You may never see it. Hopefully you'll never see it. But every now and then someone asks about it in the forums and a few people have. And let's talk about it. We're going to talk about the difference between ANSI 89 and 92. What that means, their wildcard differences, compatibility, and how to fix it if you have run into this problem. It'd be easier once you understand the question. All right, here, let's, let's, let's see the question. Today's question comes from Amber in Torrance, California, one of my silver members. Amber says, I'm using Access, and every time I type like in my query, it automatically changes to all like. This confused me the first time I saw it, too, years back. This is really frustrating. I can't figure out how to stop it. Why is this happening, and how can I make it stop? All right, let me show everybody what's happening, Amber. All right, so you're working in your database. You're plugging along happily, and you go to make a query. Create query design, all right? You bring in your customer table. And you want to see the customer ID and the first name, and you want to see where the first name is like, and then we'll do A star. That should show me all the first names that start with the letter A, right? If I hit tab, ah, what happened? Look at that. It switched to all like. What's going on here? Let me zoom in. It's all like. That's not, that's not right. And then, of course, if you run it, Nothing happens. It doesn't work, right? Assuming I have some customers in here with the first name A. Let's see. Do I have any? Uh, yeah, I got one. There's Alex Lifeson. So what, what gives? Well, there's two different syntaxes that Access can work with when it comes to SQL. There's ANSI 89 and ANSI 92. ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute. One of those bodies that like puts standards and stuff together, like those ISO dates that I love, right? The International Standards Organization. Anyways, this one's just American, so America. Anyways, ANSI 89 is the one we know and love, right? It uses an asterisk for a wildcard character and a question mark for a single wildcard character, right? And here's what it looks like, you know, select star from customer T, where first name like a star. And that'll give you what we're looking for and access allows you to use double or single quotes, okay? ANSI 92 is more compatible with SQL Server and it uses a percent symbol for a wildcard character and an underscore for a single wildcard character, right? And you've got to use single quotes for your criteria and that's what the same thing looks like, right? A percent sign. Why they're different is a long story, I'm not going into it. I wish Microsoft would unify them uh, I would tell Sammy to put it on the list, but th there's no way. <laughs> but yes, if you're working with SQL Server, this is the standard you have to use for queries. In fact, some users work almost exclusively with SQL Server because Access makes a great front end, right? Access is a great rapid application development tool. You can build your queries and your forms and reports and make a beautiful desktop interface and then put all your data in SQL Server. So it can be secured and even online, right? So lots of people, myself included, work with SQL Server as a backend. I still do a lot of my queries locally though, and you can switch between them. There's certain ways you can do it with pass-through queries and there's tricks you can play. But if you're not using SQL Server, you gotta make sure that your database is set to ANSI 89. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. All right, one of the problems you have is that like gets switched to a like. That's one of the issues. Another one of the issues just came up in the forums yesterday or today, a couple days ago. Uh, Carolyn from Hamburg, Germany mentioned it in the forums. Uh, she's working with my ABCD database and you know she there's one of the forms in there that, that filters records. She'd import mine right into her database and it would work and then she'd close the database and reopen it and would stop working. And this is the problem. In fact, Carolyn figured it out on her own. Very proud of you, Carolyn. Yep, she's got a nice little database here. She pulled in my filter form and it would work and then she'd reboot it and it wouldn't work. And then she figured this out on her own. And I'm gonna show you where this is right now. And this is in German, that's okay. All right, so how do you fix it? You go into File Access Objects, Object Designers, Query Design, and make sure the checkboxes are off under SQL compatible syntax, ANSI 92. All right, so we close this, save changes, no. Let's go File, Options, Object Designers, and it's right there. Okay, now I just checked on the one for this database to get it to work. But if you accidentally check this guy on default for new databases, all the new databases you create will be in that format. 
Okay, I'll hit OK now. It tells you you got to reboot the database, but usually you don't. All right, but now if I go create and then query design and I do the same thing, oh, I do that, bring in this guy, bring in that and that, and I come down here and I type in like a star and it works fine now. All right, so we fixed that problem. Now I have seen this setting change by itself, okay? Uh, sometimes you can import objects from another database and if Access sees that it's an ANSI 92 query, for example, it might set that, change that setting on its own. I've had that happen. Uh, usually someone else modifies it or maybe you open up a template that modifies it. Okay, so just be careful and, and just recognize that if your queries are acting weird, then check this setting. And I'm gonna add this to my troubleshooter if you're not familiar with it, it's on my website. I got a big long list and a video of all kinds of things you can check in your database to make sure if something weird's going on, you can't figure it out. Reboot the PC, rename the object, try another computer, all this stuff, right? The big, big long list of stuff to try. I'm going to put this on here because I've seen this come up a couple times and kudos to Carolyn for figuring it out because that's one of those things where if I can't really like see the database, uh, it's hard to troubleshoot. So good thing she caught it. All right, so that's going to do it. Nice short one for today, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, 
Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.